Gail, in the traditional mind-body problem, how can you explain the mind, our internal feelings on the basis of the brain is the maybe one of the most classic uh, problems in, uh, in philosophy and in, in human existence. And it seems to me, having studied brain science, that you have two kinds of views. You have uh, uh, a materialistic view. There's only one thing, uh, monism, the physical world is real. And you will eventually explain it. We can't today because science is just starting. And we've made enormous progress and mm -hmm. just follow out the trajectory and we'll eventually solve it. The other view, uh, we'll never be able to solve what the mind is, is traditionally a dualist approach. Most uh, religions believe that, that there's something extra in the reality that has to combine with our physical world, the soul, the spirit, call it what you will, mm -hmm. but it's a dualistic position. And those are the two, that's the battleground, supposedly. Uh, you, you have a radically different approach to it. Um, I'd like to understand it. Um, yeah, you said, you said that on that view, the dualist view was, was that we would never be able to solve what the mind is. Um, well, I don't think we have that problem because we know what it is. At least, not in, not in all its detail, but let's stick to basic cases of conscious experience because those are among the ones that have always been thought to raise, already to raise the insuperable problem. So right. the feeling of red and the taste of garlic, these, the basic sensory experiences. Uh, I, don't, I don't think there's an issue about solving what they are. Well, we know what they are. The, the issue is how could those be the generated? Or be, yeah, or indeed by the physical, or indeed, yes. as I believe, be simply be physical, be part of what the physical is. Okay, so and if you say that, that that those feelings are part of the physical, you have to justify that. Yeah, this, so this makes me a monist as opposed to a dualist, and it makes me a materialist or physicalist. Um, Believing there's only one kind of Yeah, I, you say I have to justify it, but actually I kind of... Where is the burden of proof? I'm inclined to turn the tables and say, give me one good reason for thinking that's not the case. Um, well, the, 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 the dualist view is, is that there is something uh, of the physical, uh, uh, there is, the dualist view is that there is something of the internal phenomenal experience of what yeah. it's like to feel this table and sure. see the brown black surface. What that feeling is, is impossible to describe in physical terms. Yeah. That's right. So, and that's, that's an old view, and it becomes acute historically in the 17th century. Why? Because people thought at that point, they thought they really were beginning to know what the nature of matter was. It mm -hmm. was classical corpuscularian contact <laughs> mechanics, which said that the physical is just little bits with various shapes bumping into each other in various ways. And Leibniz famous, had this famous image of the mill, I don't know if you know it, um, where he said, look, Imagine the brain as a mill, so there's all these cogs and working parts, and imagine it blown up so much that we could go inside it, as, in, as we do into a mill. And all we'd find is one thing bumping into another, but, and we'd never be able to explain consciousness. And that's a very powerful image. And I think it still applies today um, in mo for most people's thoughts. So we go inside the brain, and of course it's much more complicated than that mechanistic mill because there's lots of neurochemical activity, but it's still sort of, it's still sort of push and pull right, in right, some fundamental right, way. Right, right, right. Where's the consciousness? Absolutely right, right. unclear. So uh, if you want to stay in the physical world, yeah. you have to explain that. Yeah, I'm setting the problem I'm up. I'm saying that if I'm yeah. a dualist, I can, yeah. I can solve the problem okay. by bringing something in yeah. from the outside. Okay. So here's you don't want something in. You want to stay monist. You want to yeah. say only one thing, physical yeah. world. It's all you want. Yeah. So you have the burden of proof. Yeah. So here's my next move. I, I mean, why do I want to be a monist at all? But just because... Um, you know, I don't want to postulate entities beyond necessity. I look, I've got Occam's razor yeah. in my pocket. And um, so, but my next move is this. So, uh, well, what's really, what is this, in very large terms, what is the story of physics in the last hundred years? The story of physics is this kind of increasing bewilderment. I mean, it gets more and more Fair astonishing. Enough. I mean, uh, if you read physics, they make claims that seem more extraordinary than anything you'll find in any philosopher. The basis that Leibniz had with his story of the mill, that we find all these pushings and pullings and we can't find the consciousness, although, although it does still remain partly applicable today, um, we're now, you know, we're now in, involved in quantum mechanics, quantum field theory, quantum chromodynamics. So, so, that's, so that's the, the physical itself has become profoundly mysterious on the terms of our best most hard-nosed physics. So, so, so the, the sense of an insuperable gap has 
decreased if, um, if not disappeared. Fine. Some would say that you can find the subjectivity of the mind within the realm of quantum mechanics. Most people would reject that yeah. uh, for various yeah. reasons that even quantum mechanics does not have the characteristics that will lead to uh, the phenomenon of consciousness. Some would say, who want to maintain a single thing in reality, a monist position, a materialistic physicalist position, that we can maintain the, the physicalism and then we just have to classify what we feel is what they call property dualism. It's not really, it's not really a dualistic thing, but it has the properties of it, so it allows me to maintain my monism. And th that's how they try to maintain their singular materialistic position. Yeah. Um I'm not, I've never been quite sure what property dualism Nor is, I. but <laughs> I have a particular problem with that because I think that the, the fundamental or intrinsic properties of the thing do in the, in, in the end constitute that thing, that there isn't, you can't have a bare something which exists independently of all its properties. Yeah. It really, I, I don't want to say it just is the sum of its properties because that's, in philosophy, is often known as the bundle theory and it doesn't, it's, it's not good enough, but uh, if something has a fundamental property that is a feeling property, then feeling has to be part of its basic nature or mm -hmm. essence. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't solve the problem. Okay, way. so we're rejecting property dualism. Yes. We still have to deal, in your view, with a physicalist position. So how do you make that uh, uh, train? What, what do you have to do to the matter in order to make it have these feelings? I don't have to do anything to it, on my view, because it already <laughs> it already has them. And you know, this is where I bring in the the argument that all science ever really tells us about the physical world is about its structure, and it doesn't tell us anything about the intrinsic nature of the thing that has the structure. So, what is the intrinsic thing in matter or in the forces of the physical world that enable us to have our experience? Well, actually, the, you know, it cuts both ways, this argument that all that science tells us is about structure. It means that we, we can't, it, we can never know. We can never get, by means of science, we can never get to the, the intrinsic nature of the thing that has the structure that is more than the structure. Fortunately, however, we actually have feelings and we have experiences. And my view is that at that point we have, and I, here I'm with Russell and Eddington, in just having feelings, experiences of red, sounds of hearing sounds of trumpets, we are in direct acquaintance with the intrinsic nature of the physical. 